if you guys want to become a patron and you're watching right now and you're not, um, there's something that we just started this podcast in that people that I can't put on YouTube. I can't. But essentially, we were all suggesting that everyone's had a go at something. Oh, well, right? we started, have we started the pod? We've started the pod. We're starting the pod now. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, you've missed that. But if you can I'm find out what exactly you, we, every man or woman probably has had a crack at. But I, I don't also. Think I, I also think every woman has tried it. I think that's ridiculous. Do you think women give it a go? Do you think women give it a go? Men, not every man on this planet for sure. Women are more flexible than men generally, though, aren't they? It, so they might it, give it, it a go. Be- I love, I love how people know. People know, but they don't know. They're not sure. <laughs> that's why. That's where it becomes moist. You can find out. Um, but I do think that's a new bit. I like that. What's something that we that you think that everyone's at, at a go at? <laughs> it's a secret go. It doesn't all have to be about genitals. I wish I know. Could. I know our audience, and I know. I know that's what they like to talk about a lot of the time. Um, I mean, if if I was if I was to have any superpower, it'd probably be that. Do, like for, here's one one thing that in. one thing that all people do is they'll throw that so we're like the recycling our recycling little we've got a little basket it's in the corner of the kitchen always i'll always you'll always throw from distance right yeah that yeah, yeah, you do, there's yeah, no you splashing do. there it's just good clean fun which we've got a good clean fun here actually which is actually it's not just a good clean fun it's actually part of the one week ban as well uh in, in okay. today's podcast coming that is coming out. Uh, we've got lots to talk about. Uh, as I say, link in the description if you want to become I, a I don't monster. even know what, what, what I don't know what we're talking about this week. What are we talking about, Jim? So we are the what I've got on my list here. We've got um, a couple of weird flexes. Uh we are talking about last week. Well, last week we were talking about players who've had no down curve. Players who've had no sort of like, I don't know, roller coaster ride with the with people's uh, opinions. And there's a couple of options here. Some I think possibly, some I'm not sure about. But on my bullet points, I've got written down billion pound bottle jobs. Yeah. I've got homegrown Liverpool. I've got a yeah. question. I've got a question that yeah. I think I'm intrigued to get your, your take on. Um, I've got QPR out of the relegation zone. Happy to talk about that anytime you'd like. And the yeah. big game this weekend is uh, Man City, Man United. Um, so actually another thing, right? Early shouts, right? I think it's another bit for the podcast. New bit, right? Because oh, we record this on a Thursday, most times Thursday morning, uh, with, with our moisties, as we've spoken about. And it goes out on a Friday, and it's just getting you ready for the weekend. And But what I want to know is, call it now, who's getting hammered on Monday morning? And by that, I mean, when we, the, the weekend's football kind of happens, and... Yeah. Well, let's talk Man United. Let's talk Man United, Man City, because right. the reason I thought about this is that I reckon there are certain there are certain players who are prime for getting hammered on Monday. Do you know yeah, what I mean? It, yeah, yeah. It's Red, it's um, it's Rashford and uh, you it's know, Rashford yeah, and Bruno, isn't it? It's Rashford, yeah, Bruno, yeah, Bruno, Anana, Maguire. Bruno deserves it. I want to talk about that, J- Jim. The last thing. The last thing, Jim. Jim, let me got a question for you. I've got a question. Oh for you, yeah, right? go on. Him. <laughs> From nowhere. Is, is it the last thing? The last thing that Ten Hag needs is an FA Cup tie against Liverpool's kids. That's the last thing he needs. <laughs> yeah, all right. I thought you were going to say something different there. I was going to say no. playing Man City away but they, this week. But they have to. They have to. It's just a fixture. It just any time that's unfortunate for Manchester United at the moment, but. That last half winner from Casemiro meant that they've got to play Liverpool's kids at their ho- own ground. Yeah. And if they lose that, that's <laughs> almost as bad as getting drubbed 7 0 because it's not just an injury crisis at Liverpool. It's insane. I've never seen, I don't know if, if Klopp is leaning into it and going, actually, I'm just going to play the fucking kids. Fuck it. Or just give him a breather. He's, he, he, he's saving it or he likes the narrative or he just is forced. Whatever it is. Ten Hag does not need that fixture. Well, the thing is that they've got injuries as well. Like they've got bad injuries right now as well. A lot of players out. Till I, don't, I, don't I, do. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. I don't care less. Okay, good to know. Why don't you care? 
Why you, why do you care about Liverpool's injuries and not Man United's? Because in terms of the one week bans, a lot of people are getting a bit annoyed about too much Liverpool chat, which is kind of unavoidable because they are okay. an interesting talking point right now. But yeah, well, sorry, yeah. this is it's like, a bit of a loving. Just, just trying to put a podcast together. Look, yeah, I, yeah, I, I like, I've got no no loving. I hope hopefully it all falls apart and they they you know everything. This is good from Will. So kind of like who gets hammered on Monday? Who's in the thumbnail on Monday? And Will Stone said Rashford and Bruno. Rash forlorn Rashford and Bruno. Uh, angry, angry Bruno, like ah Rashford head down. Hmm. Why? Those, I don't are, those know are your how... thumbnails, I think, on Monday. James it any and, and I don't understand how there are still Manchester United fans out there that are def- staunchly defending Ten Hag when he's at the centre of every issue. Isn't he not? Like him and Rashford are barely on speaking terms according to Talksport this morning. Go on, they wouldn't lie. They wouldn't lie. To, well, I mean yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying is, is how do you know? I mean, how does like? But that's not true, is it? Like, or is that true? Like, or there might be. Wait, there's so much. Me, is there anything I've learned in the last week and a half? Is there so much bloody goss? Like football mental, players and football clubs are such gossips. It's crazy. I, I feel like they need to. They need to be kind of less football. There's a lot of football at the moment. Not the games. I'm just just constant chat and. We're a part of that. Yeah, of you're course. a part of it. Your bloody YouTube, massive know, YouTube man. channel, is yeah. a part of it. I'm, I'm, I cleanse the mind. I cleanse the palate. I'm the sorbet of YouTube, football YouTube. That's, mate, James, you're so true. <laughs> That's so true because no matter what fuck's going on, I'm changing my bio your... right now. <laughs> James Alcott, <laughs> the sorbet of football YouTube. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I, yeah. I welcome other other ideas. What are you of of football YouTube? What's Flav? If I'm the sorbet of football YouTube, what's Flav? And what's Not everyone it. else? I'd lo- let's we can read that out next week. That'd be class. Or if there's any in the chat, that'd be really really good. Because yeah, a lot of people talking about the football space, Flav. A lot of anger yeah. around the football space. Is people aren't you know people aren't happy with all the chat. But mm. anyway, um, yeah, Man City. Well, for Man United, yeah. Playing Man City this weekend is I uh, ming in. The yeah. one thing I wonder about a game like that, right? What we yeah. They've got so many players missing, Man United, right? They're playing Man City who are purring. Yeah. Fucking De Bruyne. De Bruyne and Haaland are like they're tell like so tell yeah, Haaland literally you goes orgasm. I thought you were gonna <laughs> orgasm then, Jim. No, I'm just so Sorry, I've just come. But the... Sorry, I've just come. <laughs> <laughs> De Bru- like the one of the goals I nearly did climax, uh, and because what, the there Luton was a mo- game, yeah, because there was a moment where all Haaland knew was that De Bruyne had the ball, or the ball was soon to be with De Bruyne. So he just fuck, he just went off, he just went off. He went, he went, oh, he'll find me, and it's like, yeah, he just sort of rocked up. He's like a waiter. He just went, there you go, sir, and yeah. the and the goals, he, goals he, flew. He, you should have been watching a proper game of football, Blackburn versus Newcastle. That was entertainment. Was it a ding dong? Was it? I am um, a bit of a ding dong. I did. Um, I did an interview yesterday with someone. I'm not sure I'm allowed to say who it is, but they were. Um, well, it was a Man City player, and they were talking about. They were talking about Haaland, and because I like as soon as I met him, they said, "Oh, you guys go for a walk around the, around the stadium, and we can get some like B roll." So for what anyone doesn't know what that means especially little just shots that you can use to sort of cut over the at the interview and like yeah. straight away like it was great we hit off really well and uh and we were sort of chatting and he it, and we st- he'd just come back from luton and he was saying harland i think i said the word heart like harland wow and he and he looked at me and he went it's like it's really? like it's like, it like oh. he said I, really? watch, I was watching him go through on guard i was thinking what would you do? What what's he gonna do? And then just did this little like he just he did the little chip, didn't he? Yeah. And I remember I watched I'd watched the highlights and the trade up and I was like, oof. I love things that make you go, oof. Like that's things that like make they sort of almost smell bad, they're so good. And that Get little out. chip from him was good stuff. He said, Yeah, he's, <laughs> Jack, he's a joke. Jack, he's the, you can't say it, but fucking he's pulled it out of her. Yeah, um, well done, Ben. Un, that is unreal, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was, your opinion, I was, you would now know. Yeah, that is I'll, unreal. I was flirting with Instagram stories yesterday a lot, though. You know, when you're bored on the train, it's like, oh, yeah. shut up, Joe. Joe, I'd like some attention. <laughs> let's let's put something out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so but everything, everything, 
if you like, if you look at everything that's going on with Man United and Man City, the way they play against Fulham, trash. They've been trash several times. Nottingham Forest had several chances mm. against them. And I know Man United fans get annoyed yeah. with us talking about Man United all the time as well. But this should be a car crash f- for Man United. Well, I'm sorry. It hang on, like, this gets someone. It gets someone up. Why are you talking about Man United all the time? Because you're the second biggest club in the world. You spend all the money and you're shit. Why <laughs> wouldn't we talk about that? And it's the Manchester we Derby. About... It's the Manchester Derby all this people... weekend. All we, all we, every single time, and it's the Manchester Derby this weekend, but every single time you turn on the TV at Sky Sports, you've got Jamie Carragher talking about Liverpool or Gary Neville talking about Manchester United. Even when Manchester United were completely, completely irrelevant to a Premier League season, we still had it rammed down our throats by Gary Neville and Sky Sports. It doesn't matter what's happening at Manchester United, it's always being spoken about. So sorry if we want to take a little bit of a ty- time, a little bit of time to highlight some of the issues going on at your club. Bearing in mind, we've grown up through decades of having Man United propaganda rammed down our throats. So if you don't like it, mm. well, sorry, will, it's your channel. Will, stick well, around. But the, will, there be, around. will there be the same anger when Man United inevitably start winning trophies again? Are you happy, about, are you happy for us to talk about it then? Yeah, can we talk about it then? Is that all right? When is you're that okay? Winning? Why don't you let me? Who is it? Go on, call them out, Flav. Who is it? I don't, I don't know. You told me. I, I'm assuming. That oh, sorry. Right, right. Right. I thought someone specifically in the comments. <laughs> no, no, no. You just said something. I'm saying, can you stop no, 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 about no. You Sometimes know. I get a bit annoyed about it. I, I remember when, that, I, when I did Sky Sports News, they used to get really annoyed about it. It's like, why do you keep talking about Man United transfers? Because it was a, you know, it's a provocative football club. It's interesting. Sky Sports News have asked me to. Yeah. Well, um, what, J- James, can I, can we play the game? The old game is like, what sort of result needs to happen in order for Ten Hag to get sacked? Do you know it's, what? It's an interesting one, this one. Do you know what? Yeah, great game. What I would say okay. is, I think Pep's safe. I think Pep will be fine. Um, regardless. I Pep, yeah, I think he's all right. I think he'd be, he's, he'd be he's cool. Safe. Um, yeah. I can't wait for you guys to see this interview because it's like he talks about Pep as well. And he's saying, I was like, is Pep a bit? He's like, a lot, is he? And he went, no, he's just really calm. I was like, what? That doesn't make sense to me. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. That's fascinating. So what, is it, was this off the record, this interview? Like a lot of the, the Harlands and stuff? Or... Uh, we, Joe, like... he said a couple of things that um, that were, he said he said before, you know, I'll tell you this because you're not recording properly yet. And, um, but, which I won't repeat. But no, no, the rest of it, it'll, it'll all be out soon. It'll all be out very, very soon. I can't Here's, wait. Here's a question with, the, with Pep. What, 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 Scoreline does Pep actually have to lose by to get the sack? <laughs> no, it, it's it, honestly it be, like, is it? It could is be 30 it, nil. It, 30 it nil. Matter, th- it? Yeah, new, it's 33, new, re- new record. But I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> 31 I nil. He's got to go. No, has to 20, go. Something's no. wrong. And the best thing for him to do is maybe walk away. He's quite an emotional guy. So maybe, or maybe he's not. But maybe if he is an emotional guy, he would get 31. He'd go, this is embarrassing. I'm out. 78 nil says Ben Bowman. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You only have to go if he's done some sort of like mad anti, you know, homophobic racist yeah. rant afterwards. That's the only thing that gets him out of the football club. Can, can, um, but but yeah. but but with <laughs> that's so true. Uh, any result is is impossible for Pep to lose his job. But of if but, but if he makes a joke that was that was probably okay in two thousand and eight, but isn't yeah. just doesn't wash anymore. Yeah. Uh, get rid then, of him. He, then he could get go. Rid of him. He could go. Well, that said. Football does, football tends to happen tends to um, just to blind eye to, to to talented individuals, doesn't it? Sometimes to, to their activities. Yeah. Um, but I don't for, for ten for ten hours, I don't think it takes a lot. Really, I don't think the result isn't irrelevant. I'm sorry, the the, the number of goals really isn't the point. I, I think if a complete capitulation or a complete domination by Manchester City. And it looks like the players have down tools. But and that's it for ten hogs. The surely. defeat at the defeat at Fulham, is that not more damning than any result yes. that comes against Man City? Absolutely. And as we've been saying since the start of the season, I'm not You have stuck with it, haven't you? You have stuck with it to be fair. Yeah, I, not sure yeah. about Ten Hag. Do you know what I think happened? Say like obviously he uh, you know, like you said you can't have two nine nils and be a be a good manager with Harsen Hoot or whatever whatever you used to say, right? <laughs> you can't 
you can't be a Man United manager and lose 7-0 on two occasions and start the next season. I think that's fair. Uh, all so right, it might not be... Fair. So say he loses 7-0, which he could easily lose 7-0. Say he loses 7-0... He doesn't get the sack that next day, but he is finished. Yeah, see what I mean? I think they'll do it in the summer. They don't. don't, He he's he won't get sacked before the end of the season. I don't think. If they get into the top four, do they do they have to keep him? Even though they'll have a better manager lined up. I don't think. I think a club the size of Man United, you you just get rid of him. I think there's so many managers available right now that. It's silly for them to to not really go for it this summer because a lot of these people might not be available down the road. Did you see what, did you hear what Rio Ferdinand said about? He said if uh, if Man United want Arteta, Arteta would go to Man United. So this is that's why we're talking about Man United. This is constant arrogance. Do you remember when you said that oh, Pochettino, if Man United come in for Pochettino, he go to didn't go. I didn't say that. Did not go. Didn't say that. You wanted him. Didn't say that. Didn't say that. I said he sh- I said they should, and I've said it this week again in another video. The perfect manager for every club available on the channel right now. No, that you they misheard. should go for him. Po- That's po- what I'm Pochettino, saying. I said. Po- Pochettino. Oh right, sorry, sorry. I was I'm waiting for the, the boss. I've been getting a lot of heat. I've been a lot of heat for that this week. Yeah, the po- Pochettino, Pochettino. Do you remember they were constantly talking about these rumours? Oh, yeah. of course you can't turn man down Man United. You're not that club anymore. It's got, you've got, got to get it out of your head. Rio Ferdinand, you're not. This isn't the same club with the same draw that, that, that was evident when you were played there. It hasn't been that for ten years. Ratcliffe could change things. Don't get me wrong, and may change things. But why would Arteta? Why? Would they, Arteta leave Arsenal or to enter this fucking basket case football club? And we've done all the hard work, like at Arsenal. Done all the work, and like, been uh, back to the hilt, like back, like no manager other than Pep Guardiola has been back probably. Yeah, completely bought into what Arteta wanted. So um, yeah, that, but he'd be mad to go to Manchester United. Mad. Yeah, generally I can understand Rio's take. That's the, one of the first times where I'm like. What? <laughs> I think I'd have, maybe saying it tongue in cheek. Maybe so. Let's let's give it a bit. Of Ratcliffe thing. apparently has made an irrefutable offer to uh, to who? Zidane. To Zidane. That has failure written all over it as well. I mean, you never know, obviously. But I just, yeah. if I'm a United fan, I'm like, nah. I think it's like with Man United, it's, it's the sort of can Zidane drag up. Pep Guardiola said something in an interview that came out this week. He was talking about Bielsa and he said, people talk about titles too much. And he said, uh, and he said if you gave Bielsa uh, my Barcelona team or the Man City team, and he was like, Pff. give me Leeds yeah. team. Like, and he said, he, he said, give me the Leeds team and we'd, we'd still be in the championship. Like, he said, oh, do you respect the Leeds? Yeah. But give me that. And I, I was like, Flav will love this. Admits it. Admits he can't do it. The high, yeah, can't, I, can't do it at a lower level with an unlimited budget. I don't think he. I don't, but he's always that sort of faux. Pr- he's like. He's like. Oh, I don't buy that shit when he says that. Like that. Like sort of faux. The hu- faux humbleness. I don't know what the word is. He's not humbleness. Being, yeah. Yeah. Humility. He. He's saying in the same way he says Ariola. What a manager. What a manager. What a manager. Well, no, I mean, he's just lost six on the bounce. Don't keep calling him what. I'm, it's almost like like acknowledge the trip, but but it, or Nathan Redmond. That, all that shit with Nathan Redmond. Like, you're trying to help him. You're not. You're playing. You're, you're showing up. Right. It's a part of who you are and you're, the enigma that you're creating. And don't get me wrong. Don't change your thing. Obviously. Why would you? Because look at him. Look how amazing he's been. It's, but yeah. this sort of faux humility is bullshit. So, are, what, and, are, are you sort of saying like... So, Pep Guardiola will happily um, tell anyone that their baby is cute. You go, oh, what a cute baby. But he will never tell another man of a similar age that he's good looking. Is that what you're trying to say? I think... Because they're a threat. A threat to his dominance. He will never have to prove that shit. So that's that humbleness that you're saying, I couldn't do that at Leeds. Of course you could fucking do it at Leeds. You're not saying that Bielsa is a better manager than you. You don't believe that, right? We don't believe. No one believes that Bielsa is a better manager than Pep Guardiola in any circumstance. Pep seems to. You're not educating us here. That's, that, that was my issue with that stuff. Mm. Luke says Pep calling himself a fraud. Ah, oh, we missed the old fraudiola days. Remember that? 
just great. It's a great name. It's a shame it wasn't able to stick. Um, oh, but yeah, no. I think Ten Hag. I think Ten Hag is uh, is struggling because, and I we I've been consistent too. So you've got to see it. Like we all, all football fans are smarter in terms of the X's and O's, I guess, because the game itself has become that way. That you need to be able to see what people are trying to do. And even like, even to the point, like we were speaking earlier in the week, say with Spurs, you're a bit like, it's, um, it takes your breath away in like, not a nice way. It's kind of making you a bit nervous the way that Tottenham play, but you know the way that Tottenham play. Yes, of course. Of course. Weirdly, you know, Jim, you, and I was talking about that saying like, I like, I love Postacoglu, but I kind of want to watch at least one game where I'm not, absolutely convinced we're about to concede at every single minute of the game right it's just just it's just even problems it's time it's taking time for me to adapt completely you're a baby don't get me wrong i would i'm just we're you're just a baby now about tottenham is a baby <laughs> right we're just little babies um but but you know but but and, and i get it but actually if you look at the statistics right if you remove the eye test for a minute we are like fourth we, we in terms of chances conceded or expected chances, or some whatever that fucking shit is. If we were fourth in in that we could see eight, eight a game, first fourth best, fourth oh best. best, right, 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 okay. Well, insanely, the Arsenal were like so far ahead; they're like one point six to our eight, and we were fourth. So it's not as xga. That's it. It's not Ben knows what I'm talking about. It's not as it's not as severe okay. yeah. as I assume it is. Mm. Is, I'm so desperate for Postacoglu to be a success at Spurs that I'm blinded to anything else other than I need, I need it. Like I'm not even looking at any negatives anymore. I'm just going, everything is brilliant, even though clearly there's going to be a balance to it. Do you, it. Is it, you know, like Bielsa, like, again, in this thing, they were talking about how Bielsa is a little bit, they were saying, oh, his players work too hard or and he works too hard. And so it Bielsa kind of, burn out. yeah, so it kind of combusts. Um, do you think that there's anything in that in terms of Spurs? Like, is it too attacking or like, is it too anything? Um, it's, yeah, I mean, not too, I don't want to say too, because it means I'm critical. I, I'm, I can see what he's trying to do and what he's done elsewhere. And the challenges at the Premier League are much more significant than they were, well, the, what it is like because I've been banging on about the challenges at managing Brisbane Raw <laughs> are the same as managing at Spurs, but the reality is is that the punishment is so, so much more severe if you make a mistake at this level than in the J League or in, in the Australian League. So if you lose the ball on the halfway line with the with the the level of striker that there is in the Premier League, you're much more likely to be public, punished at this level. But the shift from what we saw last season is night and day. It's, it, it's nothing I would, I, I would ever want to change at this stage. So, um, what, what is it? What, what, what are the challenges at Spurs at the moment? It's breaking down low blocks teams mm-hmm. and dealing with teams that are good in transition. And, and, and at the moment, if you want to beat Spurs, that's the best way to do it. Do you know what's a bit of a trend um, this year? It's like, uh, uh... I think there's been more discussion than ever before. Teams being great at set pieces or bad at set pieces. And um, mm. Ben just gave us a, he said a lot of it's come from set pieces. Cause when I was, I'm just on the analyst now, you can't see this, but um, it's when you, when you click your fourth, bo- fourth worst for set uh, XG against from set, from set pieces. Set pieces. Yeah. The corners. Yeah. I, I'm convinced though, that that isn't necessarily because we're bad at set pieces. I'm convinced it's because there was this huge media storm around, Vicario being awful at corners when he's about the same as any other bloody keeper. But then everyone's like, oh no, let's do this to them because he shits himself every time. And I think I don't think he does. Well, what's funny though, yeah, as well, like I, don't know. I mean it's a bit analytical, isn't it, for us? But the in terms of set uh set play XG against Tottenham, the XG against is you should have conceded 10.11 goals. You've actually only conceded seven goals. So you've kind of been, it's funny that that's become a thing when actually in terms of the amount of goals that you've actually even conceded, it's uh, it's been less than than your XG. Whereas if you look at someone like Nottingham Forest here, they put their set piece against uh, XG is 8.86. They've conceded 16 goals. 
Wow. <laughs> that is, that's really, what? that's so really what like. Uh, what does that, that mean then? Does it mean like in it, terms of the, their ability, that they've been, ta- what, what are they doing? They're making mistakes. They're not getting their head to the ball. I think it's, so it's one, it's either, it's either defending quality, correctly. quality finishing or shocking goalkeeping slash defending. Yeah. And they have had problems with, uh, with, with goalkeepers. That's, so that's what I know. Um, but yeah, so because so, Reese Reese in the chat said Flav's turning, not turning, still, still, turning still, po- still, uh, Postecoglou in. Fuck yeah! This is the best. This is great. I can't wait. The Spurs have got Palace at the weekend. I cannot wait. Okay, I've never, I haven't felt like that for years, Jim. I love my football. I love my bloody football. Love my bloody football. You bloody love your football. Well, should we have a look? Have a quick, let's have a quick look, quick. shall we? How has love it you, been Reece. going down love at Loftus Road? Um, pretty good, I think. Yes, I am. Um, which, uh, which is my team. I had a, had a conversation with someone this <laughs> week. Imagine, I think she... I had a conversation before, with someone this week. You... Do you know what I'm about? You know what I'm about saying because yeah, I can't stop talking about you. I do. I want to talk about. It. I, I want. I want to talk about that. What you're about to say, Jim. Okay. But before you do that, mm-hmm. just go and have a look at James talking about QPR two weeks ago. Right? It would have been on this podcast two weeks ago. Just have a little look after this. The <laughs> difference is night and day. It's mad. Look at him. He's giddy with it. Well, it's not, you know, we're not out of the woods yet. We're not out of the woods yet because we have a very... Oh, you got a long way to go. And we've got a really tough run of games at the moment. But we beat... Uh, one week bound for me is um, home crowds shouting at their team when they're trying to pass the ball out from the back. Yeah, like, but you're... you're, you're no. It, it, what's the average age of QPR's fan base? Too it, old. Who goes to the game? Matt Too Stanley. old. You say fifty? Like, but like, but, but if you if your team's got to a position where it's like with Spurs, if your team's got to a position by playing a, a, a certain way, quite clearly a certain way, clear identity, oh. clear philosophy, clear pattern of play, and it's worked. Shut the fuck up. Shut you, the fuck, James. Up. They don't. They're not looking at it in the way that you're looking at it. Yeah, but we'll it, we'll find a way to look. Uh, you know, like, use your brain. Re- they're being reactive to the feelings inside them. I, they I can't know, cope but, with it. That's what like, my dad, I told you, you can about still use your brain, though. You can still use your brain. My dad, my, my dad well, too, dad's using his, his fucking brain. Dad's he doesn't fucking like it. Brain. <laughs> <laughs> like, because, James, he doesn't like it. He just doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. They don't like it. The old blokes don't like it. The, the old like blokes it. hate it, mate. They, they can't hate immigration it. and they are playing out from the back. That's what old blokes don't but, like. Do you, do you want, gammon football fans, are, no, sorry, popping your dad in there. <laughs> but, yeah, no, no, yeah, mate, he did it. He, right. He's, he's you know, carrying the what, flag. In terms of triggers for those guys, do you know what the one, the one they cannot handle? <laughs> the one they can't handle more than anything else, right? Is, you know, on the six yard line, because because players can come into the box now, if the centre back passes the ball to the goalie, they can't handle yeah, it. They, <laughs> they, they can't handle it. They utter panic. Mind. Utter panic. It's um, but it is. It's interesting. It's interesting how as younger as a younger generation, even younger than us, probably found it easier. Well, me certainly. But when if when they first started doing it, I hated it. I was like, I don't like this. I feel really uncomfortable. But now I'm super calm about it because yeah, actually, and I fucking I don't even want to say this, but I can't remember apart from Hugo Lloris. And actually, just (laughs) so you said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even believe it. I don't understand what you've said. You need to finish your comments so I understand what you're talking about. No, I'm not. I'm not going to finish it because I'm tempting fate. I don't even believe in it. But I haven't seen. You know, it doesn't happen in football that often. What, at Spurs? Not Spurs. I'm not talking about Spurs directly. I'm talking about <laughs> Arsenal. Arsenal Arsenal haven't haven't conceded from playing out of the back, have they? Okay. Arsenal haven't. Well, well You've never seen well Arsenal do it. You've never seen no, it. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Thank Christ. Um, yeah, mate. We, he's doing a great job. Okay. Let's just, let's we, just um, keep, keep it with that. But we're, but we're out at the moment. It's only on goal difference. We've got Leicester next, who are ridiculously good. But, I mean, and obviously there's absolutely no chance of us being them. Is there? Could they? Nah, um, no chance. No chance. James. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I, I know what you're doing, but sometimes I don't know you're doing it until you're doing it because I'm sort of thinking about what I'm going to say next. Right. Um, 
I like it though. Oh, uh, I, the problem is, you know, like the thing that you're not willing to say <laughs> on this podcast, you're not willing to say because yeah. it's going to jinx it. I feel a certain way about I don't even something that, shit. that I kind of just alluded to there, and I don't, but I'm not going to say it because if I say it, there's no way yeah. it happens. You've got a track record. Yeah, you've got a track record of doing that. I mean, yeah. that's true. But we're we're are... still we're still you... fighting, and just don't. What is scary time is. Poor little Craigie. Jimbo's best man. Um, really struggling there. Like In the relegation down, zone. Right? Will our friendship survive? Will the tables turn? I remember a day was... when we had yeah. to beat Stoke to stay Go on. up. He I love this was story. a mid table side. We yeah. needed the win. It meant nothing yeah. to them, and he was happy for us to go down. This is a guy who lives in West London, and that's a loss of that away, that away, easy away trip as well, right? Or more importantly, the happiness of your friend, okay? And he, so, threw, so, he uh, spat in my face, Flav. He spat so in my what, face. Uh, just to be clear, what happened is, is James basically asked his friend, who's a Stoke fan, just give us the win. You're mid-table. It has no impact on your season. We need to stay up. I'm your friend. I'm asking you for this. And he said, "No, no, no. We could finish. We could finish thirteenth. I was like, "Are you serious?" And, <laughs> Didn't uh, you genuinely ever call it out? Like, you I was pissed. I was pissed off. Yeah, I was like, "What? What? What do you mean? It doesn't mean anything to you." Like, he doesn't. So he, when we he has no bearing on any of it. Though. Fortunately, you just wanted him. You wanted him to. What I, I bloody love it. I bloody love it. If we're like fourteenth somehow, God, that'd be insane. Or like we're totally safe. Doesn't matter what happens, and we're playing a team, and and they need something from us, and I'll be like, "Well, Flav, well, Craig, sorry, but these things sometimes come round, don't they? So it, you yeah. can rot in the how the oh, the tables are turned. Yeah, tough times. How the worm turns. Um, but yeah, the boys are doing well. Life's great. Um, let's talk about it's... Liverpool because no one talks about them. Um, actually, first thing, billion pound bottle jobs. Thoughts. I've been thinking about this a lot. Thoughts. Thoughts on I the don't comment know where from, I'm at. from Genev. I don't know where I'm at. I I I think in this modern era, and, and he knows his currency. He knows the weight of his words and the impact of them. And all this does is elevate his position in game as the voice of the Premier League. Right? Does it? As the I think in terms of the eyes of the fan base, like in terms of him, he knows he's super influential, right? And he's yeah. influential in the, because of the way social media works, in, in part. Mm. He also, he's got YouTube. He, I kind of, I don't think it, it didn't feel right hearing it. I was happy to hear it as a fan because fuck Chelsea. <laughs> but, but it felt, it was like, what are you? That was weird, but it, it's a power. The pundits that... of old would never have done that. I don't think that's what I'm saying, and it's something he seems to. But it's not the first time. But it was I... quite poetic, and it was. I apt. get it. Do you think he had but it ready? Like... No, I don't know. And and the, and the fact that he said bottling as well, you shouldn't. That shouldn't come from a fucking. I've got to be honest. I, so I I, don't, I, don't I think... watch most things with Gary Neville. I really enjoy listening to him. Um, but it's been a bit of a theme all season where I've been a bit like, what is going on in these matches? Like it, he, he's, and if he was, uh, if he wasn't Gary like... Neville, and he said that, he would be in huge trouble, and he would get such a telling off. Now, has he had a telling off after saying that, or is he able to just like kind of? Um, bat it away. If he if he hasn't had a stern telling to, and I know this is a weird thing to say to someone like Gary Neville, is a very powerful person, but he should have got a very very stern talking to because you can't. I I, I not look. I'm not. I don't like Chelsea, but you cannot. Your job for the co commentary there is not to say things like that. I think it was. I think it was way. I think it was way past the mark, and I think he's. I don't think he's lost touch, but I think in that moment he lost t- touch with his the service he should be providing. That's how I feel about him. I know. I agree. I agree with you. It, I, and I'm like, I don't really, I don't want a stuffy, 
I don't want stuffy co-commentary either, but there's a balance. Way, there's a it balance. It seems to go beyond the pale. Yeah, yeah. And I that I can't put my finger on why it was. It felt awkward and not awkward actually. It felt like it was beautifully constructed and really, you know, the alliteration. It was really good <laughs> in terms yeah. of Got if a fan was saying it or, or or you said it on a podcast or it was a podcast. It, mate, that is a, a YouTube title. Oh, you had that actually, didn't it? It's a YouTube title. That is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I utilized it, yeah, sure. But like, when you when you are when you're the public when you're the broadcast of it, you know, it I, I think it's a different role. Line. It was over the line, and oh. I thought the over again, the overall uh, kind of narrative pushing during the commentary, and again, I don't think it was. Um, I don't think there's any kind of like malicious nature to it, or like right here we go, let's get them. But I think the sort of the partisanship. Mate, the uh, North versus South stuff is well, it's obvious. It's obvious. Well, and I like think he would rather, Neville would rather Liverpool win their arch rivals than anyone from the South, I think. Any team from the South. Well, That's I think it's it feels. what. Maybe I'm the, just being. The Chelsea thing, right? And again, I, <laughs> I'm not a fan of Chelsea. But when. But that sort of idea of them being billion, billionaire bottle jobs. If the billionaire, if, if they hadn't spent a billion, he doesn't say that because the alliteration's not there. And they didn't bottle it, in my opinion. Also, they also, went so a, quick to jump a, on this thing about... It's a League Cup as well. It's a fucking League Cup. Well, no, I don't think like, that's the thing. It's still a cup final. Everyone's there. It's no, important. It, it's, you spend a billion... I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you spend a billion pounds, the League Cup isn't a, a, identifiable whether or not you're bottling something. No, but bottling is... Bottling is your, you were 3-1 up and you threw it away. Isn't that also dismissive of Liverpool's clubs, Liverpool's t- players? Isn't that isn't that condescending? Yeah, I mean a little bit. Obviously, the scenario there was so many injuries for Liverpool, and uh, uh, the other thing I kind of want to touch on, which was uh, some people, uh, so some Liverpool fans have said, give this a one week ban. I'll, tell, I'll get it up now. Um, little uh, babies, uh, what little babies? Tiny something. little wee baby, tiny hands like Pringles with fingers. I didn't. Yeah. To finish on Chelsea, I and obviously I did it in the I did it in the video I did it uh, you know right after the game. They should have won that game, and and so the sort of bottling I I kind of get it, but you could also spin it and go they created a, a, a solid amount of chances to win the game. It was it's, it's like football is such a, a game of variables and, and 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 tiny tiny measurements and inches, right? That's what I'm looking for. Game of inches, like right? cliche. They hit the bar. They had chances. Another day, goals would have gone in. No one would be having this conversation. Exactly the same performance, but if the ball was an inch to the left, you'd have a completely different narrative. I think I do think there's a. I, I think on a broader note, and we spoke about it on this podcast. I did and did a video on Chelsea that came out this week. In terms of, there's loads of reasons why Chelsea's a mess, but that game it in itself, yeah, was not a mess right. from from Chelsea. I think it was. It showed some of the things that we no. yeah we talk about in that video, which is being soft, and I think the youth that they have as as a collective, despite being high profile youth, is uh, you've got a lack of people to lean on, and that's what when you go through these kids for the homegrown um, talking point with Liverpool, it's not that they're kids; it's that and the done the average age thing and all that stuff. It wasn't that; it was inexperience. That was the thing. But I think you mix that with you mix that with not thinking it totally through and Carragher and Neville kind of seem to be put, really were sort of quick to push on the oh the brilliant wow Liverpool wonderful wonderful oh Chelsea horrific horrific that it kind of made it a, a bigger thing and has made it this massive talking point this week. Um so yeah. this tweet has been everywhere. Cause I think this is such an interesting thing in terms of like what is homegrown, right? So yeah. this is the initial picture from Trent. This is what you sent this morning. Yeah. So he's uh, sorry. Let me show you. He he sent Trent posted a picture, obviously about it being homegrown, um, a victory with all the youngsters that it was blowing all their minds. Um, and then someone's Before. tweeted. Hang on, where are we? I said someone's tweeted above that the seventy-two. He said homegrown, and he's gone through it. And I think it's interesting. Now, I know Ali, I don't know if Ali's here, but I saw Ali's tweet, which is how I saw it initially. So it's interesting. In this second one, they've cut out Trent. So just so let that be known, they've cut out Trent, who obviously is utterly homegrown, homegrown, right? But I think that the more interesting point here is the hypocrisy 
of it all. And and so let me explain. Yeah. So Bobby Clark joined from Newcastle at 16. You've got you know, Kwanzaa and Dans have been at Liverpool since they were eight. Uh, then Bacetics, Bradley, Harvey Elliott, who was at QPR, Lewis Kumis, who was at Tramir. All the other guys kind of came at 16 from other clubs. So there's two things here, right? One, when it... When is someone sort of homegrown and so they can mm. kind of have them as your own? And a question I've put to the chat, if there's any Liverpool fans, just Liverpool fans, if you can answer this for me, if you are in there. Do you consider Raheem Sterling, try and wash away, you know, the fact that he led to Man City and all that stuff. Do you consider Raheem Sterling kind of one of your own? Answer that question. Okay. Now, initially, as a QPR fan, the instant feeling you can when you see this is you see the plight of football and um probably a feeling of unfairness with the idea that you know Chelsea stockpile a lot of players and they go and get them really quickly and and there's this rule where you've got to be 90 minutes from uh you know the academy but Chelsea then put 11 satellite academies all around the southeast in London and so that means that they're able to get a hold of absolutely everyone and so there's an element of cheating within that. There's an element in cheating of taking jet people from Sunderland, Newcastle, uh, and so on, right? So Oli Sage says, Raheem Sterling, no. No, in my opinion. So Raheem Sterling was at QPR until he was 15 and then went to Liverpool. So, and he said, I agree with Stephen. Okay. So Stephen's saying, Dan's Kwanzaa and Kuma surely homegrown. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I'm okay with those three. Kumas, I guess Kumas from Tramir, if you want to be pernickety, but at the same time, he joined when he was 11, right? But Oli Sage says that um, is saying that Raheem Sterling is not sort of a homegrown guy, right? He came over at the same age as the rest of these lads. Harvey Elliott was at QPR as well before Fulham. So, but then the other side of the coin, the final thing for me to say is that, which I think is interesting, is that say players for like say for QPR. Say like Abir Eze or, um, or Ilias Chair. Those are two players that there's a feeling that they're kind of one of our own because they were within our academy from 17, 16 and, and made their way through. But Ilias Chair yeah. was at Spurs and Abir Eze was everywhere. So, so I think there's just a lot of hypocrisy everywhere when it comes to this idea of homegrown, which again is a shame. And another thing when we talk about the like purity of football, that... Yes, you can be really proud and excited about these guys, but you have still stolen the bulk of them from other teams, which is something that's happened for a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's normal. It's the way the way things go, and um, as uh, the, the bigger clubs always, like they do in every facet of football, find an advantage. The problem I think everyone's getting caught up on is the word homegrown. It's just a phrase used to identify how long it takes for a player to be considered a product of the academy. So that when they're sold, how much a percentage can be considered profit. So if you change the word to homegrown to development player, then the problem goes away. The issue with the word homegrown is it has an emotive connection. It's, it makes you feel like homegrown, like Liverpool has created Harvey Elliott, when you, absolutely everybody on the planet knows that they haven't. Mm. In, the same, in the way that Harry Kane was homegrown for Tottenham, i.e. played for, started playing for us when he was 10, Harvey Elliott wasn't in the same way that Deli Ali isn't homegrown for Tottenham because we bought him from MK Dons. I think what is happening is everyone's getting super caught up in that idea that that, every, that, that, that there is a suggestion that Liverpool created some of these players. They definitely created some of them, but some of the others that they bought when they were 16, 17, almost all of their development, you could argue, is done by their founding club or whoever he signed for back then. Like Dun Gallen would have done a lot of good work with Bradley. Not to say that they haven't helped with the development, but homegrown just feels like the wrong phrase. But really, all it is, and everyone who understands this, is it's just just a it's just a word. It's just the way the word that's used to describe a player that's been playing there for three years or whatever it is. Mm. I think it's, so, I guess so, it's the I think purity is an interesting word to chuck in here. Is that it's like there is a feeling of I think people struggle with the purity that Liverpool fans feel about their club and so when something like this happens that's where the age thing comes in you go well hang on a minute and then the purity thing comes in where again it's like so you could say that about a lot of Chelsea players were actually you know a kind of you know pinch probably pinched from 
other places as well. Or more importantly, actually, they just got them super early. So it kind well, of look, works within it. Look all. how good Burval is, Jim. He's, his ceiling is predicted to be very high, right? Within three years, he'd be considered a homegrown player for Tottenham. And we've right. done nothing yet. We've done nothing. We've just bought him. What's, what's the rule for being homegrown then? What makes someone homegrown? Think, just, the, just so I like I said, stop talking about this and give it a one-week ban, which is what Ali wanted. I, I think you just remove the word homegrown completely from the football lexicon and call it development player. Then you have that problem solved. Yeah. Um, but legitimately, from a fan's perspective, homegrown out of all these players that Liverpool got here, you would say Kwanzaa, Kumas, that's it. Okay. Um, do you know what's funny? Well, because I was, I, I had a little search. I was like, I searched on, or maybe I searched it badly, but I wanted to know how a youth transfer happens. Like, what are the actual like kind of rules and laws in it? And I couldn't find. I was finding very little. So I'm probably gonna do. I'm gonna try and do a podcast on that with someone who will have a bit to, more knowledge. Um, speak to. Um, I'll give you his number afterwards. Daniel Gay. Speak to him. Okay. The foot. He's a. He runs a lawyer in football. He's a lawyer, uh, he runs a firm. He, he would know all the answers to those questions. He'd be great on your pod. Here's a question for you. Um, Ready? Ready? Go on. Now, you remember a couple of years ago, Liverpool were going for the quad. And I, we, had a, yeah. we had a nice debate where I think I put it out there. Bold take, calm take. I said that a quad's never hmm. been easier to, to um, achieve. T- I remember having that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it went down well. Yeah, it did. Yeah, got got people chatting. Stand by it. Stand by it. Um, so Liverpool on for the quad once more. But yeah, not not the quad though, is it? But yeah. Riddle me this, Flav. Riddle me this, Flav. Yeah, yeah. Does a Liverpool quad trump City's treble? Discuss. Or no, because the Champions League isn't there. It not, look, it's a it's a, but it's it's four a trophies. Fantastic- yeah, but they've done that before. They did that with Julio. If it's not about the Red quality of the three, training, and it wasn't the Premier League, wasn't it Premier five League. actually? Wasn't it like the chat, the <laughs> yeah, community the... shield, didn't it? And, and yeah, and I think they won. What 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 were their trophies? League Cup, the in the FA month. Cup? Yeah, they, they did. They did the um, Cup cups, didn't they? They did UEFA Cup. They did the League Cup, and they did the FA Cup. Right. Okay. So, but that, but that, that's my point. If it's not about the quality of the competition, then that counts. If you're, if you're, uh, look, it's an incredible feat. I don't think it's ever been done, right, by a British club for, for four trophies. So, yeah, this is my point, right? So, okay, yeah, I get it. You haven't got the Champions League, right? But yeah. there's another debate, which you don't have a time, that the Premier League is the Premier League harder to win than the Champions League. Answer me that. Uh, who knows? A, you could argue both ways. Um, okay. Probably but not. You could say but... pretty equal, right? If not yeah, harder yeah, yeah, for yeah. Premier League. You ask a Man City fan, they always love yeah. to go, it's about 38, it's about 38 game season. So if Liverpool win the Premier League, the Europa League, the FA Cup and the League Cup, is that not as good as yeah. City winning the treble? Couldn't Some do it. New... Couldn't do it when they come up against Nathan Jones, Man City last year. Got done. Got it's done by him. It's something. It's something new. That you can say you haven't. No one else has done. I guess. No one really thinks. I mean, if you ask any Liverpool fan if they want to win the treble, including the Champions League or this, they would say the treble with the Champions that's, League. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Well, would you rather have four trophies or three? Spurs I think you need a point fan, system. <laughs> I think you need a okay, point look, system of like how many points do you get for Europa League and does that does the extra Europa League get you over the line in terms of look not the, being look at the look at the name, the teams that have won the Europa League in recent years that wouldn't have got anywhere near winning the Champions League. Well, yeah, I mean, I, look, I'm, I, I, I could, if I was a Spurs fan and I was doing this and I was in this situation, mm. I'd be saying, of course, the quad is incredible. <laughs> like, of course, no one's ever done it. Of course. It, but that's it. But as someone who doesn't really give a shit whether they do it or not, or if City go on to win the treble again, or whatever it might be, if I'm Spurs and I can win the treble or I can win that quad, I'm taking the treble, including the Champions League, without question. I think I don't think anyone else would argue anything different. What would you do, Jim? What's your answer? Um, I think for overall... I think it's, it's a bit confusing, isn't it? Because what's better, four or three? But I think for overall prestige, obviously the three the three is better. But four, you get to pick up four trophies. 
Yeah, but not. They, no, you are any Liverpool fan would swap a treble with because with, they haven't done that either. A treble with the Champions League for what they're going for this season. Don't get me wrong. What they're doing is incredible if they do it. If they manage to do it, it's incredible. And it's something, as a Spurs fan, I will probably never see. Okay. But if the, if you ask me a direct question about what's better, the one that includes the Champions League is obviously better. It doesn't I... matter if it's four or three. Do you know what's good, though? So, like, say they get the four. Yes. Do you know what's just so wonderful about the story? Is that you and they go... get the four with the kids? If they get the four with the kids, I'll give them that. <laughs> the kids, 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 the kids alone. Those... Kids and kids alone. Those little babies. Yeah. If they're playing three of those little babies, um, <laughs> if they're playing three of those in the final, I'll give it to them for that. Do you know what's funny about these these babies again? Now it's like, but the baby, back in the day, babies were babies, Flab. Do you know what I mean? They were seventeen, yeah. they were eighteen, they were nineteen, they were teenagers. Now they're bloody yeah. twenty twenty one. Still, we consider babies. You're not no, babies. I'm only, I'm only talking about the little babies that played at the uh, played yeah. uh, at the end of the Chelsea game. I don't include a twenty one year old as a baby. That, that, still an adult, aren't they? Old. Still an adult. You know, can we respect them for what they are? No, how, oh, it's like it was like Ryan Giggs back in the day. It's like Ryan Giggs. He's still. How is he still breathing? Ryan, look at him. Look at this. Like, look it's at this little monkey man. This old cretin. How is he still walking? It's incredible. And like with, with youngsters, it's like, he's kick- did you see him? He kicked the ball. <laughs> like, yeah, they've been doing it since they were eight. They've been kicking the ball the, for uh, years. They're kicking the ball at other clubs successfully, and then you pinched them. Joe. I think it's yeah. I think it's um. I think if like if you're if you're twenty and playing well in the Premier League, that's nothing. Like you should be. Is there a rom- the romantic story of the quad for Liverpool? Is the fact that he gets his second Premier League for Klopp, he completes the set with the Europa League, and he wins the League Cup in probably the best way he can win the League Cup as a top team now. Maybe because we're, we're little tiny little. Um, James, can I ask you a direct question? And I don't want to get you in trouble, and it might be a YouTube video you're doing later. Okay. But of the three, who do you think is least likely to win the league? Liverpool, Arsenal, or Manchester City? I think um, I've consistently said um, Arsenal will finish third. So I think Arsenal. Liverpool. I, I think Liverpool, by some distance, will will finish third. Do you? I think I think it's a fair point. It's fair to put Liverpool there because they've just got babies playing at the moment. The babies yeah. can't win anything with babies. It's like watching a crash. We're just watching nursery football um, with these twenty-two-year-old and twenty-five-year-old goalkeepers. <laughs> but um, sorry, I just turned into a sheep there for a second. The <laughs> I've I, I I think I've st- I've kind of gone with Liverpool time and again, so I'm kind of sticking with Liverpool now. Um, and it, the sort of galvanisation, and I guess yeah. uh, I guess how long until all these players are back? That's the big thing for Liverpool because at some point you're going to need so you can sort of get away with beating Liv- uh, Luton or some of those teams down the bottom, but you're going to start dropping points against the others. And when Europa League kicks in as well, so they need some. Forget the babies; they need bodies. Um, but yeah, just thought I'd ask yeah. that. I thought it was interesting. Um, people were happy with the horns coming back. It's great. Pleased. Good. Uh, Declan said, "Thank God for the return of the horns and Jeff and thumbnails. Those two weeks were some of the wor- my worst as a Jeff and fan. I was feeling like we were losing our sluggy culture. Yeah, balance is restored." Said someone else. Jack Kirby, who is a fresh moisty, he says, "What is the pod viewing etiquette?" Um, so the one for the chat to answer here, probably more than anyone else. I'm now expected to watch this, watch the live, the video, and listen on Apple and Spotify <laughs> while attempting to contribute separate yet amusing comments across all three platforms. Appreciate yes. the help. Up the slugs. Thank I would say, well, if you want to be on the pod or uh, when I when it comes to looking at the comments, I look at YouTube comments. So don't worry about writing on Patreon. Um, but of course, you get to chat with us on the live podcast um again links in description uh question for the pod t green who's the most exciting club in england to follow the flip side last week we put forward who the most boring club what did we, did we actually make a definitive answer on that i think kind of we sort of touched on i think i went with west ham in the end i think it's sort of no, knocking you, about you, as well. you didn't i, I don't remember. think you did actually so if you listen to it you you actually saying actually can't be west ham Anyway, because they won a trophy, yeah. around 
anywhere David Moyes is around, you're just starting to think, oh. like I know, I know, man, West Ham fans are getting some criticism for wanting Moisey out, but I'm like, oh god, he's boring. Yeah, if you were a West Ham fan, do you, like when it's not your yeah, team, you, just, you go Hodgson and Moyes, give him a chance. But if it was your team, I think it might, I think it yeah, would you want him. It would start to get at you a little bit. Do you know what? That's going to get poisonous as well because when it's as ugly as it is, when it was sort of like, oh, we're, we're fed up with him and then he showed his teeth and then won, then beat Brentford. It's that like angry, even if he's not being smug, it feels like that. If you're, if you, it, that's sort of adding fuel on the fire for sure. Mm. Um, yeah, mm. I think we, we got there in the end in terms of a, because Wolves having a good time right now. Brentford maybe. Then. I think we're Brentford knocking about. Brentford got to be careful. Brentford got to be careful. Because Everton are back, yeah. aren't they? Everton, Reese. I don't well, know, Reese. If you want to pop in, you can up, tell us. Tell us where we were. Well, pick up on this is like it's almost like they haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. It's, like, it's like oh well, now the points have been resounded. Vict- justice, justice, still justice. Broke the rules. Still guilty right? though. Still guilty. Still just. guilty. Just <laughs> less guilty. All right. So yeah. what? Less and guilty. You know, yeah, you're not allowed Let's to shout charge. justice. Less guilty. <laughs> We're less guilty. Yeah. <laughs> um, Frank out. So, uh, so yeah, Reese, uh, you happy? I'd love to know how you feel about it. I heard, I've heard that, um, that you've heard, everyone's heard Frank, they're lining up Frank for Liverpool. That's going to go tits up. That will, that will go tits up. If there's more of a, I've never seen a kind of, that stinks all right, Arjun, doesn't it? Yeah, you think it goes wrong? He, um, that goes tits. Yeah, I it's gotta be Xabi Alonso. It has to be Xabi Alonso. But Bayern Munich are a big pool. He played for Bayern Munich. It's not like. Do you know what's guaranteed? What I think Thomas Frank. Oh. Thomas Frank is just a little bit too weird, um, for for it to work. Sadly for him, I mean, yeah, I quite like him. Weird. So yeah, Saichi wants him. Madness. Um, or what is going to be interesting is that what we could have, what we could have is Alonso about to step in to Liverpool, and. His last game for Bayer Leverkusen is the Europa League final against who, Flav? Liverpool Football Club. <laughs> well, against that, the babies. that, Flav, is a game of football. I've been watching that one. That would probably be the first Euro- Europa League fo- final I'd ever watch. Do you know what that will be? There will be, again, another prediction from Alcott. You know the Lewandowski, uh, what was his name? Royce. It was Royce, isn't it? You know when they looked at each other? What are you laughing at? Yeah. David's comment. Because <laughs> I, do, I do pull shit out of the air sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> David Eggman, where does Flav get his rooms from? Some local drunks. <laughs> um, there'll be a moment where Klopp, the Klopp and, Klopp and uh, Alonso either embrace before the game or whatever. It will be, that will be iconic. I'd love it if Alonso just fucking, just done him. Just give him a right dig. When he yeah. tried to break up. Gosh, fuck you. To give you an Not answer, anymore. most boring club, I would I'm say... The daddy now. <laughs> I'm the daddy now. Um, the most boring club, maybe Sheffield United? It's excruciating, well, I'm still isn't it? on the board. He asked what was I know, I know, but I just wanted to get an answer. I just wanted to finish it off. Most exciting right. team in England? Well, statistically, it's Brighton, Tottenham and, and, uh, and Villa. Brighton's a, Brighton's a great club to support. Do you know what I'd uh, be a great club sport right now? Hull City. Exciting. Exciting times. Really in the playoffs, could be on the way out. Go on. really fucked me off the other day. Well. We was having a conversation with a young lad and he legitimately asked you a question about why you support QPR. Couldn't understand it, could big, he? Who is your big six club? I literally look at him and I was thinking, I fucking hate your <laughs> what did you? Were you sort of, were you concerned about, the? you know, you know I might fucking glass him? <laughs> I felt like it needed to happen, but yeah. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go to prison. So me, me and Flav to, worked on something this week. I had which... to walk away. I had to walk away. You did. You walked. You did walk away. Yeah. Thanks for the support. The <laughs> I had to deal with that situation. The... What a more. So me and Flav uh, did something which uh, you guys are going to be able to watch soon. We are so excited for you to see it, and the, I think the part of the opportunity comes from this podcast. So thank you for helping with that. Um, but yeah, as part of it. Someone who supported a, 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 a top six side, should we say, uh, said, uh, who's your team? And I went, QPR. He went, huh? What do you mean? Yeah, but come, yeah, but he said, yeah, but come on. 
<laughs> but who's I, like I who's, your real, who's your real who's your real team? Who's your real team, Flav? I sat there and I was thinking, you're the worst fucking thing about football. You are the yeah. worst fucking thing that it, uh, that there could ever be <laughs> about our game. And don't get me wrong, there are many things that are terrible about football. Yeah, injustice. But you know, racism that goes unchecked, mm. horrendous homophobia. But you, my friend, are fucking VAR. worse than all of that. Yeah, I or, or I was just like, oh, you're awful. <laughs> That's what I thought. That was what my brain thought. And then he went, yeah, okay, okay, but and I went QPR. I was at QPR, and he went, yeah, but but who's your big six? Big, who's your big six team? And I said, QPR. What's done? What, what's been created in the Premier League, like by the Premier League and by Sky and? What what what's what has been created? But this has happened what... to me a couple of times now, mate. This is happening a lot. I know, I know. This it is the is. new breed. I know it is. I, I know, I know, and, and and I don't know what what, what to do. do? Other what than do we do? How do we solve this? Every, <laughs> everything, at every moment, humiliate them. Do you know what was annoying as well? Was that person supported that club because of because of their dad? I think, but. That, not, but it wouldn't have want. mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. What it was like... It, it wasn't yeah. that. Like, it was his attitude towards you. why you support your club. That was the problem. That was the problem I had. Like, you do not understand. Anyway. It's, a, it's, a, it's an awkward climate. It's an awkward climate. I don't but, want um, to be near it. I don't want to be near it. I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to be near anyone who, who can't understand that there is value in supporting a tin pot little shit club like you. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to call you out on that. So I'm pleased, I'm pleased you checked that in. Um, I would say I would say the most exciting to, team to sport right now has got to be Villa. Has to be Villa. I think if you're a Villa fan, you're buzzing. What I thought they would fall away, they haven't. And they're playing great football. Brilliant they football. A Emily, Emily, goal I know. Against I, know. I just There's a long way to go, right? There's lots, lots of points to be had, but Villa deserve to be in the top four. They deserve it. They were brilliant. Yeah, so win your game in hand. Win your game in hand. And it's back on. No, don't get me wrong. Right? We're fine. We're playing it this weekend. And, and I'm not saying we're not in it. I'm saying that fucking one of the other three bastards can be fucked off out of it. And Spurs and Villa be there. Do you know what? Do you know what is, if you're a Brighton fan listening to this, be, you should be so excited. Because in a season where you supposedly dropped off, you're seventh in the Prem. That is, that is awesome. If you can actually have some perspective as a Brighton fan, which surely you can have. And if you can't have, I give up. Like, Brighton, I'd love to be a Brighton fan. I would love to be a Brighton fan. But I'm not. It's interesting what Ben says there. He says, uh, bring me the Europa. I'm happy with fifth. Ben keeps banging on about how it'd be good for our development if we're in Europa League. It's like one of them, you know, you people yeah. create a weird, hill, a weird hill to die on. Yeah, I know, but not at the expense of Champions League football. That's never, a, that's never an option, right? Anyway, um, he got he got well and truly uh, vilified on the fighting club. Did he? I I I get it. I totally get it. No, you don't get it. There's nothing to get. There's no argument where being in the Europa League is better than being in the Champions League. No, of course not. But but in terms of mate, That's narrative is so huge, right? And to go get back into Europe, get back into Europe and win games, confidence and building up this that group of players. It was the AVB I said that you go in, get in the group. You've been saying in that group, Newcastle, great example. Newcastle might have been better off if they'd had the Europa League this year. I think there'll be a massively different feeling around the club if they were if they just got Europa League football instead of Champions League football. I get, I understand what you're saying, but we're already there. Newcastle are on that journey, right? So, if don't get me wrong, if we get in the Europa League, I'm, I'm, I'll happily see the positives in it. But if the option is Champions League, I'm not having this fucking cock. Go and listen to the, 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 the fucking cock. I've done this already. Stupid. It's not, not a conversation worth happening. I'm with Ben. Um, but, but, but can I just pick up on what Ben said? Is that the, actually, you know, the pendulum has switched again towards English clubs getting that fifth place, whereas it was lost because Frankfurt surprisingly went out the Europa League. Oh. The problem is, though, James, is we might need Arsenal to get really far in the, in the in Champions League. So what, would, you, what would you rather have? Or Europa League football. Or, or obviously. Take Europa League, right. Any form yeah. of success for Arsenal. Fair enough. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. 
All right. Uh, yeah, players with the down, no down curve. There's a couple of options here. Uh, I don't think we found it yet. What, what, so, what does that mean? So I was saying that, say, Bukayo Saka has been nothing but brilliant throughout his career, in my opinion. Oh, I see. Yeah, there's see. this conversation about, That's there's it. this conversation about, mm, like, people sort of turning on him. I just don't get it at all. I love, I love it. But yeah, it's just this, Jim. Jim, it, their career's just been that, pretty much. Yeah, whereas, like, say, okay, Rashford. Yeah, Rashford, oh, my God. You know, next coming of Christ. And then... Yeah. And then even the last year, wow, there. world class. Now, this year, uh, like, Man United fans. Now, he's, now, he's, now sort of, he's gone from caviar to eating out of bins, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, a couple of names. John Stones was chucked in there. Short memory. Because people thought what, John I'm... Stones was a... He thought he was... People thought he was a bit of a chump. You're like, 50 million for him. And by the way, this bloke is unreal. He's incredible. He's unreal. We'll do a video on him at some point. He's Sorry. so good. He's... Oh, you, got, you know me. I love a, I love a centre midfielder. But John centre Stones is so fun to watch. So fun He's to watch. He's a Rolls Royce, isn't he? Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. He's a Rolls Royce of a defender that's got his bloody Brilliant. foot down as well. He's he's class and like another example of how what genius Pep Guardiola is. Yeah, it's it's also yeah. it's interesting how difficult it is almost to sort of believe in him because he's sort of like even now as well put together as he is, he's sort of still quite tall and sort of gangly. So you kind of think, oh, that doesn't hundred percent look right. But he's just unreal. Uh, see, Thomas, that isn't, that's not a statement, Thomas. You're not saying anything there, mate. You just said I'd have him back at Everton if City fans don't want him. <laughs> Whoa, Obviously hey, hey, would. Tommy. Right. Hey, 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 slow down. Thomas, that's madness. That's 11.48. You've been drinking. When the time did you start drinking? Saying coming out with something like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy, Tom. John, John's like this. Come come in. Hi, Pep. Um, I think I'd like to go back to Everton. I'd love to sort of... Uh, Play with Tarkovsky, Tarkos if that's all right. Lose some calm take. I'll take Ar oh. Ireland, Evan. <laughs> yeah, I think we take him at Rangers. I think him and, uh, well, Clark Salter and Steve Cook have been superb. But yeah, we'll take him. Uh, CJG Frey. I think Foden has been pretty resistant to criticism. Even when metrics haven't been amazing or when he hasn't been consistently in the team, he's always discussed as among the most talented English players in years, which he is, for the record. But he seems to be Teflon. Very rarely you see criticism for him, apart from the who's better debate between him and Saka, which is frankly a bit boring. Is that why you didn't watch the video then? Any other country would be delighted to have him. How now, Jim? And Saka as well. Well, I can't, you know, speaking of roller coasters, that's, you know, that's YouTube. Uh, Bazal, I don't know if this is a wind up or not. He said Joe Hart didn't get any stick that I can remember, only from Pep. Joe Hart. <laughs> don't think Joe Hart was like, oh, Joe Hart. Hart got, you hated yeah. Joe Hart for a bit. People hated Joe Hart for quite some time. He fell off massively. He was terrible at Tottenham and, you know, he's back, bought as a backup keeper, I guess. But he's, is he still, in, is he playing golf for Celtic? Yeah, he's retiring still. at the end of the season. He made an announcement recently. All right. One thing I, one thing with Joe Hart, I just don't, I can't get my head around the, was the, is the tattoo, the like bar tattoo around his forearm. I just don't get it. I just he's like to know, around a, I'd like to have an explanation oh, on that. He's carrying around a piece. I reckon Joe Hart's carrying around a piece. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. There's a massive wang. Yeah. Huge. Joe, yeah. He's like full time in the dressing room, close off immediately. You know, like some Ooh. people in the football team, some people like, they're just like, oh, it's just off. You know, like sometimes you see, like you'll see the footage, and it's like they're having to go at the, um, you know, the managers having to go at the team, and there's like one bloke's in his pants, <laughs> like no one else. Everyone else has still got the shirt on because they've been discussing it. There's one guy, just everything off. That's Joe Hart. But there, there, there was, there, I've probably said this before, but I remember like going to the gym back in the day, and there'd be some men that'd just be instantly naked as soon as they get in, like all completely naked, mm. and like. What is it just because you've gone through this door? Are you suddenly completely naked and walking around like it's normal? Do you know what I can't handle is this, right? Hang on, I'll show you. It's like, <laughs> what, in what world? Do, do people do this at home as well? Right? Do people, but in a gym, for some reason, certainly my gym, there's like these, um, there's like 
these long sort of like bench things. And yeah. for some reason, naked, they want to do that. Yeah, and, and yeah. Like, Why is the knee going up? Yeah, Why I don't know. Why is the I mean, knee I, going up? I can understand the practice. I can understand the practice if you're alone because you need to, it gives you separation, doesn't it? But you don't need to lift your leg. You know, it's oh, more it's bizarre. It's less, less, it's less important for you to be dry than it is for me not to see that. Yeah, it's a great point. When we banned, where, where, whatever happened to talcum powder? Where, when did, where, it's not why good for you, I think. I don't think it's good for you. So my nan used to fuck you when I was a kid and my nan would bath me, fucking all over me, head to yeah. toe. <laughs> like Casper the ghost. We <laughs> balls did. Uh, one week ban. Yeah, Lewis Foyle asked you guys to uh, tell me what you want uh, to be banned. Uh, one that was actually is actually good, clean fun, depending on your opinion, is um, Joe Gomez being told to shoot. So apparently every time Joe Gomez hasn't scored for Liverpool, everyone seems to be aware of this. And now um, every time he gets the ball from about 35 yards out, because he's playing as an inverted Genius. fullback now, everyone's going, shoot. I think that's right. good, clean fun. I mean, it's, it. it's just nothing. I feel nothing about it. It's like not. It's like one of the least funniest things I've ever heard. Okay. There's the Arsenal did this back in the early '90s with John Jensen. Do you remember him, John Jensen? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he didn't score. Yeah, scored the winner scored in uh, in the Euros against Germany. He? he did. Do you know who scored his first goal against? QPR. Correct. I remember. In it. a free one defeat. Called it, didn't he? Yeah, meant nothing. Well, it might have been one <laughs> Uh Lewis Foyle, one week ban. He'd like to give anyone who puts ketchup on a roast. People like that need to take a long, hard look at themselves and grow up. I actually need some horseradish, so it's well, well, well in. What, what is your condiment what, on thanks the, for the Thanks for the reminder. English mustard. Yeah, I'm bosh. I do both. I do both. I made a cheese toasted the other day with English mustard. It was cheese. Onion and mustard, but I overdid the mustard. And I, I like the dig it, in the you face. You love I do it. love it. Yeah. It was too much. It was too much. And so <laughs> asked, someone asked me, they said, uh, was it, what kind of mustard is it? Dijon or English mustard? And, and I went, well, it's English mustard. And he went, what's stronger? I went, fucking <laughs> Dijon, fuck. You asking me, what's stronger? <laughs> yeah, Dijon yeah. fucking mustard <laughs> or English mustard? When has the French ever done anything stronger than English than what we do in England, right? Fucking English, man. Don't ever ask Absurd. me that fucking question again, you cat. Breaking news. Pogba banned. Four years. Okay. Pogba is banned from football for four years for doping, seemingly ending the career of the event. Four years. It's over, isn't it? Yeah. Who was once the world's most expensive footballer. Do you know what? What a it's disaster a bigger, of a move that was. Bigger fall off than that. Apart from, you might say, Danny Alves, who's serving four years for rape. Yeah, I would say that's worse. <laughs> yeah, that is much worse. Um, it's... Um, yeah, Robinho, it's seven, seven years, doing seven years. I'd love to... What, what, what I think needs to be found out here is, is, is sort of the comparison of, sort of how, how heavily doping was he. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's probably like different levels of doping. Do you know okay, what I mean? Was it? But was yeah, it? Is much, it something that? But is it something that in England you get done for a year, or are Italy harsher than other countries? Um, but yeah, I mean, no chance, no chance. Four um, years. Wow. Is it, I wonder wow. though. Is he? Is he going to be the? You know, is he going to be the first will of many? A, will there be a tide? Yeah. Um, wow. It's it's bizarre that. For someone who seemed so, so disinterested in playing for, uh, at times, for him to go to the lengths of doping in order to play. Yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, what, what what was it? Was it doping to get injury? Was it was it was it helping him getting back from injury? And he's just trying to think. I need to speed this up. Or was Pos it? Like yeah, positive for testosterone after he entered his first game of the season, which I think he was on the bench for. I don't think he even started. Obviously, he'd had problems with injury, so maybe it was coming back from injury. But also, I guess it's, I think it's the thing of like, you know, you know, just getting yourself up to speed, right, as well. Not speed the drug. <laughs> so, yeah, sad times for Pogba. Pogba. Many a video essay, I would imagine, will be on YouTube in the coming Very days. Very soon. Are you, um, you going to do a video on it? We were going to do one, and then um, 
I just saw a few already and it was kind of like, well, I guess people have kind of spoken about it already. So we will leave it. Say? We like to, it's important to say new things. We like to try and say new things on this channel. So we don't need to. Luke just said, uh, couldn't get it up. That's why it's t- <laughs> testosterone, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Shame. Yeah, Shame. yeah. Imagine if that was the truth. Four-year ban. But guys, <laughs> guys, at the hearing, why would you take such a thing? It's so obvious. Couldn't get out. Is Viagra banned? I think Viagra would be all right, wouldn't it? You don't... I don't know. Is Viagra banned in sports? No. You feel free. Feel free. Fill your boots. Right, we'll finish off with some weird flexes. Um, I don't know if we did this last time or not, um, but... We'll do it again, just in case. I think we did. Hi, James. Love the videos. Uh, he said, I wanted to share my weird flex. I can make a very realistic water droplet sound with my mouth. Did we do that last week? I feel like we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. Yeah, okay, we did. we'll move on. Uh, right, to Joe Court. Holding court. I if what? I don't react, it's because I can't. The stream you're sharing isn't working, so that's why it is. Okay. I'll just... I think I'm doing it on a low uh, level. So let me just do that again for you at a higher level. 60 frame rate give, oh, yeah. you the, give you the best like. available to you um so here we go we've got so this is uh joe court he says i literally have a weird flex in my nose for context i've never broken it or taken any of columbia's finest just got a nose seemingly made out of play-doh okay let's oh, have a look shall we okay joe holding court Oh my god, he's got no bones <laughs> in his nose. We enjoyed the wink at the end. <laughs> yeah, we enjoyed the wink. That's yeah. Uh, get that off my screen. I think that's um that's useful though. That's the great angle, isn't it? You see where his bone well, stops. It? It, the, the, where the bone stops. Oh, fair play. I neglect him. Yeah, as Reese says, what a freak. What a my freak. words. <laughs> and on that note. Again. We finished the podcast. How long have we been going for? It felt like a long one. 120. Twas. No. Twas. Um, Twas. Once again, thank you to our patrons. Massively appreciate it. Um, we do a mailbag. Most weeks we haven't been able to do it this week. Um, maybe we can sneak one in tomorrow. I'm not sure, but we'll find a way to make it up to you guys. Your cat's um, dying. Your cat's dying. Yeah. Got to take it to the vet tomorrow. So, leave you with that. Okay. Bye. Pray, pray for what's the name of the cat? Sid. Pray for Sid. Bye. Um, yeah. Be grateful for everything you've got on, especially on that. Um, bye. 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 Yeah. No. Yep. Yeah, bye. Bye. Bye.